it's time again for Coach's Corner with Jay. Featuring the Knowles head coach, Jay Sercosta. And our host, Jeff Stevens. No matter what size you are, maybe it's time to transform your physique. For your convenience, Transforming Physiques is open all day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Thursday, Fridays till 7, and Saturday 9 to 3. Take advantage of free weights and heavy-duty workout equipment. For expert advice, call trainer Jay Abel to schedule one-on-one -on -one fitness training. Aerobic classes will be starting in September. Adult, student, and family memberships are available at Transforming Physiques Fitness Center and Tanning Salon. The Woodsfield Clinic, a division of Wheeling Hospital, opened recently with familiar and friendly faces in the office. Joan and Janie know our area and many of the patients, which is a huge asset to the clinic. Dr. Charles Denunzio brings 30 years of healthcare experience and is focused on the needs of a rural practice. The Woodsfield Clinic will be expanding to five days a week starting September 6th to meet community needs. We are here because you ask us to be. A division of Wheeling Hospital, finding solutions, serving with care. Students are able to get a very good education, gain some valuable experiences, and they don't have to leave or go far away to do it. Whatever I wanted to do, I could go down to Athens and everything would transfer down. So not only is it close to home, it's a decent price. Small classrooms and a friendly atmosphere, it just makes for a great place to start or even go all the way with the whole degree. Ohio University Eastern, it's a new day. If you're around others that smoke, you are at rest. Sitting behind someone who is smoking in a stadium for three hours is the same thing as a non-smoker smoking one cigarette. Riding in a car with somebody who is smoking with the windows rolled up for one hour is the same as a non-smoker smoking four cigarettes. And sitting in the non-smoking section of a restaurant is just like smoking one and a half cigarettes. Your choice leaves us no choice. To learn how to protect yourself and others from secondhand smoke, call Monroe County Tobacco Use Prevention and Control at 472-1677. Would you like to break the tobacco habit? We can help. Call Tammy at the Monroe County Health Department, 472-1677, extension 204. Good evening. Welcome to Coach's Corner. Tonight, Coach and I will recap last week's disappointing loss to the River Pilots. We'll talk to a couple player guests and then look ahead to next week's opponent, the Caldwell Redskins. Well, Coach, you know, despite the disappointment of the game there on Friday night, you know, there were a lot of positives that came out of the game, especially in the first half, but then it ended up just some of the same old things with the penalties and the turnovers late to really hurt our opportunities. Well, it was a very difficult loss uh, to endure, Jeff. Uh, you know, when you play that hard and uh, you lead right down to the very end and then get beat on a, a last-minute field goal like we did, it's just very difficult to, to deal with. And uh, But I did think our kids played hard. I thought uh, that they played much better than they played in the first two weeks, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But as you mentioned, the things that are uh, a thorn in our side are the turnovers and the mistakes that we're making. And until we uh, correct those, uh, we're going to continue to have problems going to find it hard to win because you can't make mistakes, you can't have turnovers and expect to beat good football teams and that's what's on our schedule, good football teams. We've had 13 turnovers in three games and that's that's enough turnovers for the entire year, let alone three games. So uh, you couple that with penalties, I think we had about 75 or 80 yards of penalties and uh, that spells problems. And uh, you can look back, and as I told our young men after the game, there was no one person that lost that game. Uh, we lost it as a team, and, and uh, you could look to uh, so many different things throughout the course of that game that could have changed the complexion of that game around and maybe give us a little better opportunity to win. But the big thing you gotta come back to are the turnovers, the penalties, and that's something we definitely have to stop, that's for sure. But there were a lot of positives, as you said. Uh, you know, when you look at the offense, uh, the first two weeks we struggled uh, uh, tremendously, and uh, I think this past week we started to get some things going offensively. Uh, we had 250-some uh, yards of offense. Uh, we probably had over 100-some yards more than what River had offensively. We out first down them. Uh, we threw the ball for 176 yards. Uh, we rushed the ball for 80, which is still not good as far as our standards are concerned. We definitely have to do better as far as the running game. But uh, 
we did a lot of things uh, real well. When you look at their scores, and to take nothing away from them because they've got a nice football team and, and they end up winning, and it's not to be sour grapes, but the two plays that really uh, killed us was they, they returned a punt 91 yards for a touchdown, and then on their other touchdown we had the quarterback sack, as you'll see on the highlights, and uh, he just barely got the ball away, and another one of their kids cut in front of the receiver that was intended for and took it in for a touchdown. So those two plays uh, hurt us big time, and uh, but we we still need to improve offensively. We do need to do a better job of the, the running game, and we need to continue to throw the ball successfully, and uh, we need to put some more points on the board and continue to play defense. And I thought one of the brightest spots of the whole night, Jeff, was the fact that uh, they ended up getting down to the one yard line, and our kids did a tremendous job defensively keeping them out of the end zone. I held them three plays at the one foot line, and I think they even thought about going for it on fourth down, and probably now looking back, and probably been, hopefully, uh, maybe they would have gone for it on fourth down, but our kids never gave up and didn't allow them in the end zone, made a kick a field goal to win it, and it was barely through there, but they counted it, and thus we suffered a very difficult defeat. So, uh, you know, our kids have to bounce back and uh, try to get back in the win call this week against Caldwell. Well, you know, as a fan, you know, coming home from the game, you think of all these things in the second half, the things that you just mentioned. But really, when you look back in the first half, there were enough missed opportunities there that we easily could have been ahead more than seven points at halftime. No doubt about that. In fact, we were fortunate to get one right at the end of the half on a long pass, uh, you know, that uh, they knew we were going to throw the ball. And normally when you're in that situation and they're to prevent defense, it's very difficult to get behind them. But we got behind them and got one right for half which was our benefit, but uh, we blew some golden opportunities in that first half. We had the ball down there, I think, inside of 22 different times that we should have come up with some points on the board, and we didn't. And uh, those things will come back to haunt you at the end of the game, and they surely did that. But, uh, you know, again, uh, that just goes to show you that we've got more work to do offensively, and we got to continue to improve, and we got to take advantage of those opportunities and try to put points on the board every chance we get. And then... Uh, Probably like the most notable injury there during the game was, was Nick Bellman, who seemed to be cramping up a lot of times. How about an update on Nick and also on, on Buck Robin? Well, we had uh, the old uh, cramp bugaboo hit us again, and you know, it's not that we haven't, uh, you know, run, and it's not that we haven't told the kids they need to hydrate their self, uh, they drink a lot of water, Gatorade, Powerade, and that type of thing, but uh, we had some cramps at the end. In fact, at one point in time, we had Nick Bill out with cramps, we had Tory Prickett out with cramps, and, and that really creates a problem for us offensively because uh, we have a limited number of personnel in those positions to step in there, but uh, Nick gave a, a gallant performance there on defense. Uh, he was cramping up, and yet he had to defend the deep pass. They went deep several times, and uh, you know, that was very tough when, uh, when he was cramped up the way he was, but uh, you know, uh, Nick was sore for a couple days, and uh, uh, you know, running pretty good this week, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to avoid that cramping situation this week. It sounds like maybe it's going to, toward the end of the week, maybe Friday, cool down a little bit, so hopefully that'll help. As far as Buck Wiley is concerned, as most people know, Buck sustained an injury in the uh, Buckeye Trail game, a knee injury, and uh, he's been rehabbing through therapy, and uh, they're trying to get him uh, back in uh, shape. Uh, he has to pass a test of a certain percentage once he does that, and the doctor... Uh, uh, we'll probably give him the okay to maybe come back. Uh, when that will be, we have no idea. It just depends on how quickly he progresses. He seems to be walking good, and he said it feels pretty good, but uh, you know, until he gets the okay from the doctor, uh, we'll not have his services, and that could be for a while. All right, very good. When we come back, we'll talk to a couple of player guests, both members of our junior class, right after this. GAP Wireless is your hometown wireless agent. That's great news for you because now you don't have to drive 30 miles or more if you have a simple problem with your cell phone. Maybe your current plan just isn't right for you and the way you use your phone. Well, GAP Wireless is your one-stop shop for wireless. Stop in to customize your plan, pick up accessories, or check out the latest audio and video streaming camera phone with a radio. GAP Wireless is an Altel authorized agent. 
Emergencies happen 24 hours a day. When seconds count and options matter, you need access to a facility close to home. An emergency room in a hospital with a direct link to Ohio State University medical specialists. Doctors and nurses there for you 24 hours a day. The emergency services at Barnesville Hospital are ready when seconds count. What option will you choose? Urgent care with limited hours or 24-hour care from an accredited hospital? Barnesville Hospital Emergency Services. Green Acres is the place to go Garden tilling or grass to mow Showroom spread out so far and wide Come and see all our four-wheel rides Ah, the steels are what you've got to see Great advice, good price, service repairs, extra care, save a buck, you're really in luck, Green Acres, we are there. We're joined now by Matt Ishi. Matt is number 53, he's a junior offensive guard and linebacker. Well, start with Matt, um, you know, first part of the season through August, you know, you were lining up as a, uh, a nose guard on the defense and then had to form, become a linebacker. And how tough was this transition and are you becoming more comfortable with this? Um, it wasn't very tough at first because the coaches had enough confidence in me and I was a little nervous, but because my speed's on, it's definitely not one of my biggest uh, helps, but... The coaches had enough confidence in me, and that gave me enough confidence to go out there. And I'm pretty comfortable right now in, in middle linebacker. You know, since last year, you've become a lot bigger player, you know, physically, and put on a lot of a lot of muscle and weight there. You know, what uh, what kind of routine did you go through in order to, to bulk up? Uh, just four days a week, Mondays and Thursdays, I did my up, upper body muscles, and uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, I did my lower body muscles, and I worked for about an hour each uh, workout session. And, Got some tips from my brother who goes to Mount Union. He knows a lot about lifting up there. They do that a lot. And you mentioned having the confidence to play linebacker and the coaches having the confidence in you. What's the best part of being a linebacker as opposed to being a middle guard? Uh, definitely the go games. Uh, I get a better full, I get a better full start on them, and uh, I, I can work up some steam by the time I get to the quarterback. And during the course of the game, fans might notice you step away from the defensive huddle, look over to Coach Sherman, and get the defensive signals. And, you know, is this, is this tough to remember all the signals? Because it looks like Coach has quite a few things he goes through. No wristbands or anything to keep track. No, that's not very tough. Uh, he keeps it pretty simple. Mm. Now, as an offensive guard, you know, what's, uh, what's your favorite play there? What do you like to do the best as an offensive guard? I definitely like trapping, probably 47 trap. Uh, I can trap and pull the end, pull and hit the end. And uh, he comes down hard, comes down pretty hard, and usually doesn't see me coming, so... Okay, uh, Coach, uh, here's here's a young man who, again, you had a new position at the beginning of the year, and then a week into the season, he's asked to change positions again. You know, maybe it's easy for him to do because he is such a good student in school, but it's, it's nice to have people that can change positions. Well, Matt is a very intelligent young man, Jeff, and, uh, you know, he started for us at offensive guard last year and uh, continued to improve each game with the experience he got. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, this year, uh, you know, we expected him, uh, expected before the season, started that he would go both ways not only offensively but he'd also line up and play defense probably most of the time and as you mentioned we started out looking at him as a middle guard but with the injury to Buck Wiley uh, and being short in depth in terms of linebackers that's why we moved Matt we felt that was our best move to move Matt to an inside linebacker and then make some switches on the defensive line and so that inside linebacker and any linebacker is not an easy position to play you're right in the mix of everything and uh, but you got to learn what to do and it takes a while to get acclimated to that you know I see a big difference in Kyle Rader this year from last year he got a lot of valuable experience at reserve level and uh, now he's a lot more comfortable there and I think you'll find the same thing with Matt once he gets a few games under his belt he's going to be a lot more comfortable and he'll get his reads a lot better and uh, 
and I think he'll he'll do much better at the uh, inside linebacker. But being as intelligent makes it a lot better, and the fact that uh, he's a very coachable young man and uh, he doesn't say a lot, he just steps in there and does his job. Uh, I think you'll see him step up and make some big plays for us on the defensive side of the ball as well. So uh, hopefully we can get things worked out on that offensive line because he's one of the keys on the offensive line as far as that running game. We talked about the running game, got untracked a little bit last week, but not to the point where we want it. We definitely want to get up over 100 yards rushing each game uh, as a minimum, and uh, last week we were at about 80, so we do need to improve in that running game, and he's one of the guys that we'll count on to do that. So we're looking for Matt to do big things for us, uh, both on offense and defense. Well, appreciate you being here with us tonight, Matt. You know, continue the good work, and maybe somewhere down the road here, linebacker, we'll see one of those 15 or 20 tackle games, and maybe that'll be tomorrow night. When we come back, we'll talk with Tori Prickett. A good football team works together, helping each other to do their best. A good insurance agency works together, too, showing you the best coverage for you and your family. F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency represents several companies, so you benefit from personally designed coverage for your home, autos, or business. Talk to one of their agents about all your insurance needs, including life insurance and annuities. As they continue to look out for your future, F.W. Shoemaker Agency is celebrating over 100 years of service. The Seminoles of F.W. Shoemaker Agency, two winning traditions. When we first opened our doors in 1929, Marietta Memorial Hospital marked the beginning of a commitment to health care in our community. From the start, the vision of compassionate care has been the standard for all that we do. Through the years, Marietta Memorial has been a leader in our community with advancements in both patient care and technology. As we celebrate our 75th anniversary, we continue that commitment, working to make a measurable difference in the health of the community where we live and work. Most financial institutions like to talk about how big and strong they are. At Ohio Valley Community Credit Union, we'll show you just how big. Ohio Valley Community Credit Union. We're as big and strong as all of our member groups. Everyone in Belmont County and everyone in Monroe County. Ohio Valley Community Credit Union. We're now joined by number 24, Tori Prickett. Tori's a junior, running back, and strong safety. First of all, Tori, uh, you know, Friday night there, noticed you, know, you got a chance to carry the ball a few times. Was this part of the plan going in? Did you know you was going to carry, or did this catch you by surprise? We kind of got some reps with me in there on scout defense and offense, and it was definitely a pleasant surprise. And I think the fact, you know, that you know, there's some holes there and you made some good yardage, you know, you know hopefully you, know, you get a few more pleasant surprises as we go. Um, stepping up this year uh, to the varsity level after playing, you know, running back and also strong safety last year on the JV team, what's the biggest difference between the JV ball and varsity ball? Well, it's definitely a lot faster and it's more intense and the collisions are a lot harder, which is a lot more fun. What's the toughest part of playing that position on defense, of strong safety or, or monster? Uh, covering flats on a pass because I'm always wanting to step up and make tackles on the run first, but I've got to be disciplined to drop back into pass coverage. What's the best part of the job? Uh, linebacker, hard in. On that. And see, every, every first couple of games, or especially that first week, even Coach Sherman turns you loose on a couple of blitzes to go up to the quarterback on that. Now, as, as most people probably know, but in, in case they don't, you, know, you had a real nice year last year in wrestling, you made the state wrestling tournament. Can you convey any of that skills from wrestling to football, things that, from wrestling that's helped make you a good football player? Definitely on the blocking side of the ball, you can learn how to get leverage on people and run the ball wise. It's a lot about balance. You know, I think any sports like that kind of go hand in hand and, and help each other out. Well, Coach, you know, Tori, he's not, not a real big young man here, but he's shown here in the first three weeks of the season he's can be quite the fearless player. Well, I guess if you had to take one word to describe Tori right now, Jeff, it would be the fact that he's a hitter. 
And I think he showed everybody that right from day one in our practices, in our scrimmages, and so far in the first three games. He'll step up and hit you. He's not a very big young man, although he is bigger this year than he was last year, and I think he'll continue to grow and get bigger. He's not probably, and be the first to admit, maybe the fastest guy on the team, uh, but yet he will give you everything he has on every single play, and his hitting factor on defense is what you know kind of caught our eye, and we knew that there was going to be a place that he was going to secure on that defense defensive side of the ball because of his hitting ability and he tackles real well and I think that's one thing that's kind of synonymous with wrestlers that we've found over the years uh, you know a few years ago uh, Christopher Wilson was probably our best tackler and he was an outstanding wrestler and I think that a lot of those skills that you use in wrestling carry over to football and Tory has done just that he's a very intelligent young man so you put all those things together and you can see that he has kind of made his presence felt so far in the first three games early in the season as you mentioned uh, we gave him a few carries last week and uh, against River and as you mentioned there I mentioned that he's not maybe the fastest afoot in terms of our players but uh, he'll run hard and he'll give you everything he has and uh, that, that makes up for a whole heck of a lot so I think you'll probably see him carrying the ball a little bit more on the offensive side he's got great hands and that's another thing that caught our eye in our preseason uh, workouts going into our passing scrimmages uh, we saw that he had excellent hands so we got him out as a wide receiver and he's made some nice catches for us and I think you'll you'll continue to see him make catches on the offensive side of the ball so big hits on the defensive side of the ball some big runs and big catches on the offensive side of the ball uh, you're going to see a lot of Tory Prickett well that's that's a great I appreciate you being here Tory you maybe continue all this hard work and maybe next time will be to get you in the end zone here one of these games real soon all right uh, you know good luck you know to Matt and Tory and all the rest of the Seminoles in the game this week when we come back, we'll look at some highlights from the River game. Be a winner. Catch a great deal on a new or pre-owned car or truck at Norton Ford. Look at the selection in the lot or let them use their locator service to find exactly what you want. Norton's have served Monroe County with quality Ford parts and service for four generations. And there's still a home light dealer offering sales, service, and parts. So why not let Mike help you reach your goal when it comes to your next vehicle? Be a winner. Shop Norton Ford. Dr. Jay Seidler and nurse practitioner Carol Shoemaker, staff of Marietta Healthcare Physicians, want to take this opportunity to thank all of their patients for your continued support over the past several years. Dr. Seidler and Carol are thrilled to come home and serve your health care needs. We're here for you Monday through Friday and accessible by phone at other times. So if you're already a patient, thank you. If not, call to make arrangements for transferring your medical records to Marietta Healthcare Physicians. McDonald's in Woodsfield is not just great food and lots of fun, it's a vital part of our community. Perla and Dell believe in supporting our kids. That's why McDonald's is proud to be the exclusive halftime sponsor for the Monroe Central Seminoles. And proud to offer 24-hour drive through service. McDonald's food whenever you're hungry. This is the receiver of the Woodsfield Redskins, and I'm loving it. Stop by and try McDonald's latest chicken premium sandwiches. We're loving it! So before or after the big game, celebrate at McDonald's. We'll start tonight's highlight package with a CBL by defensive end Tyler Nolton. Now, I don't know what their scheme was here offensively, but nobody blocked their defensive end. Number 82, Tyler Nolton. He stepped right across. They tried to block him from the backside, but it's too late. He makes a nice stop there for a CBL. The offensive line gives Dexter Hughes some time, and he finds Kyle Rader for a big completion. They here we run out of wing right, high formation, slide uh, Kyle through the batter line, and uh, Dexter gets excellent protection here, and he finds uh, Kyle Rader in the flat. He picks up a key first down. Well, through all the cheering of the Seminole crowd here, we see Nick Billman with a nice catch and run for six points. Well, it's basically just an out route here, and uh, Dexter will throw the ball out to uh, Nick Billman, and uh, Nick does a nice job looking the ball in and catch it, but he, uh, the big thing about this one is he avoided about five or six tacklers and took the ball in the end zone for touchdown. 
Here's our first look of the year of place kicker Kyle Singleton with Holder Tory Prickett. Well, Kyle does an excellent job on both of the uh, kicks here, and this one he gets all he wants on it and uh, kicks it in over end right down the middle. So after the touchdown, here's freshman Mikey Russell downfield for good kickoff coverage. Well, Mike's done a nice job for us, and here you'll see him come down the field. He's a freshman, uh, but he stays right with things and uh, makes a nice tackle right here. He stays on the outside, then he moves in and makes a tackle, number 11. Here's sophomore linebacker Kyle Rader with the CBL. Now, Kyle does a nice job here on the blitz, and uh, they're trying to run to the right here. Uh, they'll bring the wingman in motion, hand off to him, number 21, Smith, and Kyle's right there uh, to make the tackle. Excellent defensive play. Here, Dexter Hughes and Nick Billman team up once again. And you'll see, Jeff, we, uh, our offensive line does an excellent job of pass protecting for Dexter, and he has plenty of time to throw. He spots Nick Billman on the sidelines, and Nick makes a heck of a diving catch here and just gets inbound for a big game right there. Reaches out, tremendous catch. Kyle Rader will give you some positive yards up the middle. And we're lined up in a power eye formation here, and Kyle's a fullback the uh, up back right here and he'll take the ball off the left side pick up some nice yardage does a nice job of running as a full back right here makes a cut steps up over somebody and lowers his shoulder takes it up field for a nice game here is one of our guests tonight Tory Cricket yeah, Tory lines up at the right half back spot we'll send the uh, left half back in motion out of the wing formation and then run a straight dive to Tory off the right side and does a nice job breaking free, picks up nice yardage. Here you see Dexter hand off to him. He breaks through at the line of scrimmage and does a nice job getting the ball off field. Tory Prickett turns a short pass play into a big gainer. We already talked about Tory's ability to catch the football. He's got great hands and uh, he'll line up, uh, line up trips to the right. He's the inside receiver. We're running out of shotgun formation and uh, Dexter will get the ball to Tory. And uh, once Tory makes the catch underneath right there, he turns back the middle of the field, does a nice job breaking it, gets by one guy, and just gets caught right here by Smith. Otherwise, that would have been a touchdown. The River quarterback tries to bounce it to the outside, and Kyle Rader comes up and makes a nice open field tackle. Well, we talked about Kyle and uh, his experience that he's gained at the linebacker position right here. He does a nice job of reading things. Quarterback tries to bounce outside and then turns inside, and Kyle comes up and makes the uh, stop there for about a minus four. Senior defensive lineman Eddie McConnell with a quarterback sack. Well, here they have got uh, some receivers to several receivers to the left side of the formation. You see him shift right there, and they're in the shotgun. And uh, <clears throat> Orndorff will try to go to the left side, but has nobody open. And he comes back to the uh, outside, tries to get outside, but Eddie McConnell makes a nice shoestring tackle there. Senior defensive back Justin Hogue with an interception. Uh, Justin's second interception of the year, uh, and uh, here he does a nice job stepping in front. Orndorff will go to his left and try to throw the ball inside, and uh, Justin's right there to step up, pick it off, and uh, bring it back a few yards. Just before halftime, Dexter finds Nick Billman behind the river secondary. Well, like I mentioned earlier, Jeff, it's tough to get the ball deep when uh, you don't have much time left in the half, and they're expecting you to go deep. And here we've got three wide receivers to the left operating out of the shotgun formation. Uh, Dexter will go downfield. He gets a low snap there, and uh, fortunately, he was able to pick it up, run to his left, and uh, lets it go. And Nick uh, makes another diving catch in the end zone for a touchdown. Great effort. Singleton makes it two for two on conversion kicks. Nice snap by Skyler Bondi, good placement by Tory Prickett, and an excellent kick by Kyle Singleton. Splits the uprights right down the middle. We're now in the second half. Matt Ishii is going to make a nice open field tackle. Talked about Matt Switch from middle guard linebacker, and that linebackers have to go parallel to the line of scrimmage. And here you'll see number 53, Matt Ishii, come to the right his right and make a nice open field tackle here. Uh, does an excellent job. Here, Coach, your defense is so close to making a big play and it turns into a river touchdown. Yeah, you talk about a game of inches, Jeff. You'll see Tory Prickett come from the backside, number 24, who's on our show tonight, and jazz a hold of Warndorf, and he's falling to the ground, and he just heaves the ball, and uh, Matt Abbott comes inside, 
makes the catch and takes it in for a touchdown. We were so close to having him sacked and his knee was within inches of the ground. Nick Billman turns a short pass into a big game. Yeah, here uh, Dexter Usel hit Nick Billman. Uh, uh, he's out at the split end to the right here uh, to the bottom of your screen. Nick makes a nice catch of the ball. It's basically just a little pitch route. And then uh, he'll use a stiff arm here to get away from one tackle. And then turns up field, picks up a couple extra yards. Nice pass, nice catch, and nice run. And you can see there Nick's cramping up. On this play, we see Nick Billman stays deep and makes an interception. Uh, here, number one uh, quarterback, uh, Orndorff from River, would be try to go deep off a of play fake. Right here, fake that one way and then come back the other way and roll and just throw it deep as he did many times that night. And Nick Billman makes the catch for the interception. Dexter Hughes scrambles and picks up a first down. Out of the shotgun formation uh, late in the game, Dexter has nobody to throw the ball to, so he does a nice job at uh, coming out of the uh, shotgun formation and picking up a big first down. Right here, he'll, he'll take off running down the sidelines, knows where to get out of bounds, gets a first down, and we've got the ball at the 38 yard line. We're now late in the fourth quarter after a similar turnover. Tyler Knowlton makes a big play. And on the first down, they try to go to uh, their left, and uh, Tyler will uh, step up, does a real nice job here, getting across the line of scrimmage and making a great tackle. The start of a great defensive stand, Eddie McConnell comes through and throws the river ball carrier down. He gets the ball down the one-yard line here, and uh, our defense does an outstanding job. They go inside to Huffman there, and uh, Eddie McConnell is right there along with the rest of the defense to throw him back, and now it's second down. On second down, your defense comes through again. They put start tailback here out of the eye formation, hand off to him off the left side, and actually the ball comes loose. No one knows where the ball is for a minute, but then uh, they pick it up. But their guy was on the ground and took it in the end zone, and uh, they thought it was a touchdown for a minute, but uh, it's uh, we hold them on second down, bring up third down and goal. For the third consecutive play, pilots are turned away. Well, they again line up in the eye formation. They got start tailback again and uh, they'll give to him this time off the left side again, but we got a host of uh, seven other tackles right there uh, to make the tackle and keep him out of the end zone for the third straight time. As you stated earlier, Coach, a game of inches. Well, they contemplate on going forward on fourth down here for the touchdown. They elected to go for the field goal, and you can't see because of the angle here, but then I couldn't see uh, as it happened, but uh, the ball evidently was just inside or over top of the uh, upright and uh, called good there for the game-winning field goal. And now it's time for our Citizens National Bank Play of the Week. For an instant it looked like Prickett was running in the open on a fly pattern to the left. Hughes now throws. Look out this side. Complete. This is Nick Billman. Billman. He'll step away from one man, step away from another man inside the five. Nick Billman touchdown. 26 yards and a touchdown, Seminoles on top. There's what we've been waiting on, Coach. The Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, home-owned and independently operated since 1933. Your community bank. Our officers, directors, and staff are dedicated to customer and community service. We reinvest your deposit dollars locally. So remember, banking with us is not only good for you, but it's good for your community. Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Bill Respect. You heard me talk many times about how we offer you the best variety at the best possible price every day. And we do it with no cards, no gimmicks, no hassle. Just like you, we're working to get the most we can for the money we spend. So if these things are important to you, come home to Respects. We'll even add customer service as we continue what Grandma started over 70 years ago. Buy, buy it and store it when you can just ask Woodsfield True Value for the tools and equipment you need for your next project. Let that auger, log splitter, 40 foot extension ladder or pressure washer just in time for fall chores. If you need earth moving equipment, hand tools, party supplies, lawn and garden tools or stuff for automotive care, concrete work, plumbing and so much more, help is just around the corner at Just Ask Rental, Woodsfield True Value. Ha <laughs> ha! 
You'll be pleasantly surprised at the clean and beautiful used furniture and appliances at Bob's, like this Hard Rock Maple Dining Room suit at only $5.99, or this five-piece kitchen set. Like new and antique bed frames, new bedding, and bedroom suits. Plus recliners, tables, desks, dressers, and lots of other items with inventory constantly changing. Appliances are priced to sell. Washers, dryers, refrigerators, stoves, and this upright freezer at only $319. The price is right at Bob's Used Furniture and Appliances. Up this week, Coach, the Caldwell Redskins, another road game, third time in four weeks. The Caldwell with the new coaching staff in hand this year. Um, you know, for one, I guess it would be nice to play a team here that's undefeated, or it's not undefeated, I should say. Um, but, however, Caldwell 1 and 2, their record is quite deceiving. There's no doubt about that, Jeff. Uh, Caldwell's a good football team. When you take a look at their the, uh, record so far, 1 and 2, very deceiving because they start out with a 17-6 win over Federal Hawking, and I think Federal Hawking is maybe 2 and 1. Uh, they uh, lost in week number 2 after leading, having led Buckeye Trail 9-7. to seven. They got beat 28-7. to seven. Uh, and then this past week, uh, they would let one slip away, similar to us. They only, instead of losing in the last minute and something, they lost in the last 10 seconds. 15-14 uh, to Barnesville after having a 14-0 lead and having the ball on Barnesville's 14-yard line with the score 14-7 to or 14-8, to they had a chance to probably put that game away. Barnesville held them, drove down the field and scored with 10 seconds to go, kicked the extra point, and beat uh, Caldwell 15-14. So uh, there's no doubt about it, Caldwell is a good football team. Uh, they're much improved from last year. Uh, last year was supposed to be their year. They were loaded with seniors, and uh, this year they still got a good many seniors playing, but they seem to me as though they're much more aggressive and a much better football team. When I say a lot of first-year starters, there, but they have really responded well to the new coaching staff. Um, you know, their quarterback, you know, is, is a, a nice athlete. I know. What can you tell me about the rest of their offensive personnel? Well, up front, Jeff, uh, they line up with Dustin Crum, senior, six three two zero five, number seventy three at center. At the guards, uh, two juniors, Ben Gerst, le uh, number sixty, five eleven, two hundred pounds, and Trent uh, S Seidel or Siddle at five nine one eighty, number sixty six. Uh, two juniors at the uh, tackle positions, uh, Jared Ramage, a big guy, 6'1", 275, number 75, and Chris Triplett, uh, another junior, 5'11", 225, number 56 at the other tackle. At the ends, uh, Michael Jeffrey, 6'3", 225, uh, a senior, uh, number 85, at one end, and at the other end, Jason Schott, uh, 5'10", 150, number 27. Uh, at their wingback spot, one of their go-to guys, especially when they throw the ball, keep your eyes on number 23, Travis Thompson. He's a, a senior, 5'10", 165. He's got a lot of big catches for him, and they like to get the ball to him. In the backfield, their quarterback is number 7, Logan Clark, 6'150", uh, junior. And uh, he made, he's made some big plays, and I think they found out in the Barnesville game that not only can he throw the ball, but he's also a runner. So I think we'll see him run the football probably more against us than he has in the first three games. Derek Hessen, number 21, a sophomore, 6'1", 205, fullback. And Zeb uh, Hollowell, a senior, 5'9", 155, number 12, as their leading rusher, 65 carries, 187 yards. Clark has thrown the ball uh, 135 times, or uh, 26 times, completed 11 for 209 for a 69-yard average. He has three touchdowns and three interceptions. They've rushed the ball uh, 135 times for 431 yards. They're rushing for an average of 143.6 yards per game, and they have two touchdowns. So they like to probably run the ball first. Uh, we'll see them in a wing eye formation. We'll see them in a what we call a, a double tight, a wishbone, and also a split uh, end one way or the other, wishbone formation. They'll run out of the slot uh, eye formation also. So those are the basic formations. I'll line up and run at you. Uh, at, and then, we, like I say, we have to kind of stop the run first. And then, of course, we can't forget about the quarterback's ability to throw their big uh, receiver, Thompson, too. Well, now when Caldwell goes on defense, 
you know, again, new defensive coordinator there, so they've changed a lot of things. I would assume there, what can we look for as far as how they'll line up? Well, they're still playing a 40, and that's, uh, you know, they've kind of, in the last several years, played a 50 and a 40, uh, but uh, they're pretty much a 40 defense, somewhat like River, a 4-3. Uh, they'll overshift their linebackers, and basically all the guys that I mentioned on offense play on defense, uh, other than, I think, uh, one person, and that's one of their linebackers, number 11, or number uh, 36, uh, junior Chad uh, Haga, he's 5'11", 155. Everybody else that I mentioned on offense plays on defense, and uh, they put the big guy inside, Ramage, at a down tackle. And the one thing I was impressed about them in their 40 defense is they really come up field hard in their uh, with their front four people. So we're going to have to do a good job on the offensive front in order to establish that run, and I'm sure they're going to give us a lot of uh, pressure there, rushing uh, as far as trying to rush the ball. And defensively, they have uh, allowed 468 yards against the rush and that's a 156 yard average a game and passing wise they've allowed 238 yards an average of 79 uh, yards per game passing so uh, again they're going to present some problems for us on defense we're going to have to be on our toes offensively and it's always difficult I think when you go on the road to, to know a team's place, you know, especially a team that's, that's young and hungry, and that presents a challenge in itself. Well, that's exactly what I told our young men this week. I said, uh, you know, look at the uh, situation. It's pretty much the same for both teams. Uh, they won their opener, lost their next two. Uh, we won our opener, lost our next two. So both teams hungry to get back on the win track. And uh, I think the team that wants it the worst and the team that makes the fewest mistakes, which we've talked about many times, that's been our big downer, uh, is going to be the team that's going to put themselves in a position to win the ball game. Well, and that kickoff for that game will be tomorrow night at 7.30 and at the Noble County Fairgrounds. We we'll hope to see you there. When we come back, we'll wrap up with a few items and have a few more closing comments after this. The Noble Family Health Center is and always has been a part of your community. For almost 30 years, Monroe Family Health Center has been providing excellence and comprehensive health care in Monroe County. We invite you to visit us and take advantage of our lab, x-ray, immunization, medication assistance, and other services available in Woodsfield. All insurances, including Medicaid, are accepted with a sliding fee scale based on income and family size. Four doctors and a nurse practitioner are ready to serve you and your family. That's on the car, that's a piece of junk. And then I was listening it Ow! Oh, brother. I had a great idea. Very good at going forward. Yeah! I'm not going to do it. 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 For over 100 years, Bauer Turner Furniture has been serving our community with quality furniture and bedding. After a big day, kick back and relax in a dual recliner sofa, or choose from living room suits featuring couches with comfy armchairs or matching recliners. Then pick the perfect coffee table and tables and lamp to suit your personality. Of course, they stock bedroom furniture to please the country, traditional, or contemporary decorator. Kitchen tables and chairs, hutches, entertainment centers, and more can be delivered to your home this week. So stop by Bauer Turner Furniture today. Since 1887, folks have trusted Woodsfield Savings Bank with their financial needs. So when you need someone to lead you with your financial decisions, come to the friendly folks at Woodsfield Savings Bank where customers count. Because of your busy schedule, we offer a drive through and night deposit box, as well as convenient parking, direct deposit, and automatic payments. The folks at Woodsfield Savings Bank truly believe that making an investment in our kids brings the biggest return to our community. Yeah. Before we start a wrap up, I wanted to mention that how much Dale and Joe appreciate the phone calls that have been made to the cable company. Uh, they tell us that they think they have found the problem, but uh, don't be afraid to keep calling until that problem is fixed. But you know, please continue to do that, and thank you for your support and your patience throughout. I uh, also want to mention, Coach, uh, in this past Monday night, the JV team posted their first win of the year. They're now 1-1. One one. They had a win over River, and they'll play at home next Monday night, 
here at uh, 530 against the Caldwell team. Any comments as far as your JV team? Well, I didn't get to see the first half, Jeff, because we were going over the tape from last Friday night with our older kids. But I did get to see the second half, and I think there's marked improvement in our uh, JVs. Uh, and they don't get a lot of time to work together as a group, and they're pretty much in the same boat as everybody else. But uh, they did post a 24 nothing win over River, and uh, I thought they uh, became more aggressive and uh, seemed like they wanted to play a little more and what they did in game one so if they can continue to improve and that's the idea of the reserve games to give the younger guys that do not see a lot of playing time on Friday to give them that game experience because there's nothing that uh, gives you more or better experience in that actual game experience against somebody else. Also uh, this past week the winners on the sideline or board uh, first quarter winner is Ron Martin halftime winner Steve Shoemaker third quarter Joe Hoff and final score, Kerry Stahl. And if you are a winner one of the weeks on this sideline board, you can pick up your checks uptown at the Traditions Restaurant. Also, uh, tomorrow night, the game will be broadcast on radio station WWKC. That's 104.9, the Caldwell station. And it will be the announcers that normally do the Caldwell games. Coach, any other comments? Well, one other thing, Jeff, and I know it's getting late, uh, you know, seeing this show being on Thursday night, but uh, we did have tickets uh, available for the Ohio State, chance to win two tickets to the Ohio State-Iowa game on the 23rd. Those are going to be raffled off tomorrow night uh, before the game. So if you haven't received, you got your ticket yet for that, you might catch some of the sideliners over there before the game and pick up a raffle ticket and take a chance of winning two tickets to the Ohio State-Iowa game. Uh, this is made possible by State Representative Jennifer Garrison uh, donating the tickets and uh, to the game and also donating, uh, printing up the tickets for both uh, our team and Caldwell's team. Both teams sold them, so somebody's going to be a lucky winner of two Ohio State-Iowa tickets. And uh, you know, that game is, I believe, uh, the following week, 23rd, yeah, mm -hmm. on that end. Uh, any other uh, sideliner items or anything like that? We, we have uh, some jackets, uh, and that's going to be uh, come that type of weather here for too long. I know in uh, the beginning of the week we're experiencing 80 degree temperatures, and no one's thinking about jackets or pullovers, but we have jackets and we have pullovers and uh, things of that, sweatshirts of that nature, and uh, we still have some of those for sale. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, they can see me, let me know, see one of the players, let them know, see one of the sideliners, and let them know. And We'll get those items to them. Well, and so maybe a little easier to sit here this week and talk with at least a few positives to, to come off of last week. Now we just need to finish the job and uh, and get a couple of wins here, and then we can really enjoy sitting here and talking about ball games. I think. Well, I told our kids, Jeff, after the game, that our goal was uh, right now was just to, to get number two, to win, uh, get our second win, and that's uh, hopefully tomorrow night. And if we can do that, then we can start building on a little more of positives and and uh, get things uh, continued in the right direction. We're on the opportunity for that win number two tomorrow night at the Noble County Fairgrounds against the Caldwell Redskins. Hope to see you there. And if you're there or not there, please join us Saturday morning, uh, 11 a.m. for the replay of the game. And then Coach and I will be back here again next Thursday night, and we will recap that game and look at the future games. So that about do it for tonight. Hope to see you tomorrow night at the game. Good night, everyone.